Hi, first of all, congratulations to all the STEM OPT students. Um, the final rule will be published tomorrow, I mean, uh, on March 11, but we already have a draft, and I have mentioned that in my previous uh, YouTube video. But I'm going to outline in this video why what it is there because there are some difference from what I have placed last time from the original one. So first the good news is that it will be hopefully be low by May 10, 2016 and uh, from the CFR publication and the link is below you we are expecting that by May 10 you should be able to apply under the new 24 month OPT STEM extension. So first of all what is uh, what is happening on this new OPT uh, the rule will will uh, lengthen the STEM OPT extension that means we are moving from the 17 month to the 24 month and uh, for for those who um, qualify under second degree they will be able to to get another 24 months so uh, pretty much the same thing uh, we have seen but they they kind of a little bit tricky on that people are getting a little bit confused but we will get more details as we go third um, and uh, they will define STEM under the CIP the uh, Department of Education classification of instructional program and uh, this is what's going to serve for the SEVP and the service system and uh, they will put on their website uh, wh wh which um, degrees qualify under the service system. Um, so STEM will be kind of redefined so we need to check the list and we will know where, where things are going. And uh, the next step is that they have a training plan for OPT students as we mentioned in our previous uh, as we mentioned in our previous video and uh, they will have a program which basically will uh, will talk about the training of the students who are going to be on STEM OPT. The rule will require em uh, employers to implement a formal training program. What it means is basically it has to be something formal, it cannot be something just on the side, oh I was training that person. No, it has to be a formal training program and it has to augment the student's academic learning which basically means that the student has to be uh, what we call um, get more knowledge from what they are doing. Uh, augment means to increase, so it is something that is going to be also there. The next thing that uh, we are talking about is um, for those who have obtained an, um, a, a STEM, uh, have obtained a degree previously from, um, from an institution, and it's an, it was under STEM, even the next degree uh, is not a STEM degree, they will be able to use that previous uh, degree to, uh, to qualify under the STEM 24 month. And a good example, for example, you have a, a degree in biotechnology and then later you take a degree, a master's in, uh, in, uh, an M in business administration, you might still be able to use that previous degree to get the STEM extension. So the other thing is um, very important that they're looking at is, of course, the safeguard of the U.S. workers. Um, one of the big things that kind of killed the 17-month uh, OPT is um, the fact that this thing that there was no safeguard for U.S. workers. So re um, relevant to that, they're going to issue a new form called Form I-983, which needs to be filled and uh, we are where the employer will have to attest that it has sufficient resources and trained personnel to provide the training to the OPT student. The student will not replace a full-time or part-time permanent U.S. worker. And the third thing, the opportunity will help the student attain his or her training objective. So very important, a, a big uh, burden, or we should call it a big responsibility of the employer, they will have to do that. And uh, accreditation, very important also is the accreditation of the school. This is where the schools, even they think they are accredited, the DHS will come and basically check if there is um, uh, uh, accreditation. If they, even if they are accredited, by the way, by the Department of Education, they will still do a check. The other thing that they will do also, they will do site visits to check on the employers and uh, they will request third thing they will request that there is a reporting requirement from um, from the employer this is where 
we have the 693 uh, form, etc. So we will see how it enforces when we get the real. Uh, and uh, of course, the reporting requirements will be in effect. And uh, and also the other thing is unemployment. You will they will add another 60 days of unemployment that is allowed under the stamp. As you knew previously, it was only 30 days. You couldn't would be out of work. Now it will be a total of. Uh, of uh, 120 days so basically you should be able to to get more time to find another job etc etc so this is this is interesting too now what what has been retained under the provision is basically the main one is e-verify of course you will have to do the e-verify and the student will have to basically also report to the DSO and the next one, uh, the reporting requirements, the details will be given probably. Um, they will have to report to the DSO if they change address, uh, things like that. We're talking about the students here. And uh, the cap gap, of course, uh, the cap gap is a big thing that helps students to continue working until the H-1B kicks in on October 1st. So that will be kept also. Now, this is also a summary of the changes that uh, that has been uh, basically uh, modified on this new final rule, and the, the 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 basic things that has been changed is the time of accreditation, and um, the student must have obtained a degree from educational uh, uh, educational uh, institution that is under the SVP. So what we were talking about earlier is that situation where. If the student, uh, the school is not a good school, you might have some issues going on there, and uh, they will look into that. Uh, the accreditation is going to be major, and um, also side visit notifications. As you know, there will be side visits on a on a regular basis, but they will have to notify the employer 48 hours before, and. Uh, the truth is, uh, most employers, oh, but if they feel there's something wrong, they might come up any time, which is kind of a little bit scary for many employers, but we will deal with that as we go. And they will focus, of course, of tr on training, where you have the mentoring pra uh, plan and the form I-983, and existing employer training programs, they will have to streamline and clarify the, 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 the training program by the employer will have to be clarified. Employer attestation, we mentioned that this is where the employer will say they are not going to displace a U.S. worker. That means they are not going to lose, they are not going to fire U.S. workers. And also the last one is a evaluation of the student progress. So ladies and gentlemen, I have tried my best to kind of dissect this low rule of 300 pages, which is sitting there. And hopefully the rule will be happening, uh, will be coming to play, be effective as for May 10, unless of course we see another lawsuit which we are getting used to recently. So I recommend that if you have any questions, give me a call. Feel free to post your question at the bottom of this YouTube video. And anything I told you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any question. Thank you.